All right, let's get to work. First to the man who knows what goes on behind those Trumpian closed doors because he wants work for the candidate, veteran Republican policy analyst and political advisor Sam Nunberg. We're also joined by the presidential historian, author of numerous books, including the New York Times bestseller, Last Act, The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan, Craig Shirley. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. All right, let's go ahead and get to work here. Thank Sam, you. this is interesting because here we have words used for Stephen Bannon, such as... Um, a gentleman who is uh, mostly a negative when it comes to operatives, someone who likes to get down in the mud, and people are looking at this as a media executive getting behind Donald Trump. Do you think this is a good idea? Well, actually, I don't. I don't think that they needed to make such a change right now. You know, the issue really is these last couple of weeks with these falling poll numbers are these aren't Paul's fault. They, these wouldn't have been Corey's fault had Corey been there. These are actually Donald's fault. You know, nobody advised Donald to get into a fight with uh, the Khan family. Nobody advised Donald to continually stay off message. And to basically bring somebody in, like Steve Bannon, who is saying, well, we're going to have Donald say what Donald wants to say. We're going to let Donald be Donald. Uh, I don't think that that's going to be a recipe for success. Because remember, we're not in the primary anymore. We're here in the general. And in the general, it's about addition. It's about finding new voters. So we're not talking about a pool of 25 million like the primary. We're talking about a pool of around 130 million. So I'm not so sure the message that Steve will be pushing. And I like Steve. I know Steve. Steve is a genius. But if it's a Breitbart-esque message, that's not a message that's going to win a general election. I'm sorry. All right, let's go ahead and look at some of the history here, Craig, because you heard Mike Pence, not here, but basically his quote talking about, hey, wait a minute, everybody, take a break. This is preseason. Everything doesn't really start until Labor Day. Wait a minute. Let's, let's get some historical perspective here, Craig, because this campaign's been going on for about a year here. Is he right? You know, the sports analogies only work so uh, only uh, work so uh, long. We're we're not in preseason. We're in uh, we're in f full season right now. You know, in '76, uh, Gerald Ford lost three primaries in a row to uh, Ronald Reagan, and his uh, campaign manager was uh, reporters were clamoring for him for about a staff shakeup. And Roger Morton blurted out, he said, "I'm not going to rearrange the deck chairs on the on, on the uh, Titanic." Uh, and so the question remains is that is, is Trump rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic? I'll tell you one thing is, is that we're talking about a staff shakeup when we should be talking about, and by the way, we're just like everybody else. He actually gave a very good speech last night. But instead of talking about the speech last night and what it meant for American inner cities and uh, America's police, we're talking about a staff shakeup, which is one more precious day lost of the Republican candidate telling the American people what he's going to do for them instead of, uh, of the problems of his campaign. And all it's sending to, to the American people, the message is, if there's something wrong with Donald Trump's campaign, maybe there's something wrong with Donald Trump. All right, let's get to that now. The newly appointed Trump campaign manager is Kellyanne Conway. She says the campaign is in high gear now for the remaining 12 weeks before the election. So here's exactly what she said. You're going to see him really, you're going to see us very much focus on about five to seven to eight swing states immediately. Watch for our ads this weekend. Our first ad buys okay. will go up this weekend, Charles. In addition to where we beefing up our ground game, our data operation, candidate appearances by Mr. Trump and Governor Pence. Um, take a look at that, the eight or some swing states. A couple of things I heard in there, ad buy and gearing up our ground game. All right, Sam, you've been doing this for a long, long time. There hasn't been a ground game. As a matter of fact, many of the people in the various states where there is a ground game starting say they don't even know the Republican op. They don't know the people who were there. They've never seen them before. They've never met them. And quite frankly, in some states, they can't even find them. So if you put that together with an ad buy, which again seems to be coming very late here, is it possible that what mm -hmm. Craig alluded to a little bit, the message is completely lost. People aren't even hearing the message anymore because they're hearing more shenanigans than anything else. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, let's get back to that. Obviously, they need to do what Kellyanne just said. And Kellyanne is a genius. I've worked with her on other campaigns, and she's extremely talented. She's on message, and she's great on TV. But that's process stuff. And, yes, you need organization. But if you don't have a good product, like in any business, and this is somewhat we can look at this as a marketing business, you're not going to be able to win. And the fact of the matter is, as of this summer, the real lost opportunity for Donald is that his favorables have not gone up while her favorables have Hillary Clinton. She's tied him on the economy, and she's, even and she's even beating him on trustworthiness. So 
we can do whatever we want. We can bring in new people. The fact of the matter is, unless Donald stays on a message, a message that can win, a general election wide, broad message of prosperity and opportunity, this is all minutia. And it's not going to matter. So I still think the debates are critical, and Donald still can win this election. But as of now, it would not be good. Craig, let's go ahead and talk about it. It would also be actually that. catastrophic. OK, well, there's the word that a lot of people are using. Craig, let's look at history then and put this in perspective. Somebody who is this far out, six weeks from actual voting beginning, early voting, 12 weeks or so until we get to November. Uh, many people see this campaign as in complete chaos. Is there any precedence in this historical-wise for a president, for a campaign to be this, this much disarray and still come back and win? There are uh, two... Uh, in modern history, there are two precedents uh, that Trump can take comfort from. Uh, it was in 48 when uh, Truman came back uh, to beat Tom Dewey. You know, the, all the polling companies actually stopped polling after September of, uh, of 1948 because they just, they just figured Truman was a goner and it was just a waste of money to uh, poll the country. The Democratic National Committee actually shut off the money to the incumbent president of the United States. They shut off and they devoted whatever resources they had to the uh, House and Senate races. Truman came back uh, and, uh, and won that. The other is uh, Reagan in 1980. Uh, as of a week before the election in 1980, he was actually down to Carter. Carter was mounting a furious comeback. Absent that debate, in which Reagan won decisively, Jimmy Carter probably won. The problem overall with the Trump campaign, and there are many and attendant problems, is that there are only three resources in a pol any political campaign. There's time, there's money, and there's people. Now, you can always raise more money. You can recruit more people. You cannot manufacture more time. Time is finite, and he's burning the daylight right now, not getting his message out, but instead talking about staff and talking about uh, things that have no consequence whatever to the American people. 30 seconds to you both. Craig, I'll stay with you. The new Zogby poll out today shows that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are in a statistical tie. Clinton, 38 percent. Trump, 36 percent. Gary Johnson, 8 percent. Good news? I mean, let's face it, all the polls don't go against Donald. No, that, that is. Any, any news right now is uh, good news, and that's good news for Trump. I'd like to know what the methodology is of the, uh, of the poll, uh, but I would look for uh, Gary Johnson to start making a move. All right, so to you then, last word, Sam Nunberg, a poll like that. Don't you just need something right out? Just anything at all that you can get that's positive, hang on it, hit it, hammer it, because that's what you need to get out there. Well, look, the good news is, and the good news for us, for your viewers, is Donald Trump is not going against Mother Teresa. He's going against Hillary Clinton. We have, there, are many issues that can ha there are many issues that can come. National security, the Middle East is still, is still uh, you know, bombing up, and we'll see what happens. And by the way, don't underestimate Donald. I've worked with him, and I know him, and anybody who underestimates him is making a big mistake. I'm going to tell you this, and both you gentlemen, maybe you've heard me say this before. Nobody underestimates him, and if they do, they do it at their own folly. We've already seen that happen. That's exactly right. Sam Nunberg, Craig Shirley, gentlemen, a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining Joining us. Now, if there's one thing both candidates could use right now, it's good publicity. But do they really know how to get it? You're going to hear some rather shocking words about public relations and the Trump campaign when we continue next right here on The Hardline.